Hey everybody, it's me, Lone, back with the Fallout 76 video. Before I get into it, I again want to thank all of you for helping me reach 100,000 subs on my YouTube channel. We also just got verified too, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And the next step is getting that silver play button. So as soon as I receive it, I'll be sure to share it with you all. So today's video is going to be about legendary crafting in Fallout 76. Still Rain releases on July 7, and as part of that update, we are getting this brand new legendary crafting system. It's going to be super important, so what I want to do in today's video is explain it in its entirety, tell you what it's about, what you need for it, and also demonstrate it to you in real time. If this video helps you, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. It always helps with these videos a lot. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, but with that out of the way, let's get to the video. Okay, we're in the game and let's get into it. This new legendary crafting system is going to allow you to craft legendaries for specific weapons, armor pieces, and now power armor pieces at your choosing. The way the system works now in the game before Steel Rain, and we're going to exclude Gauss miniguns and Secret Service armor, and essentially those items you can already now craft as a legendary. But the way the system works now is that if you want a legendary weapon or armor piece, you've essentially got two options aside from purchasing one from another player. You can kill a legendary enemy, or you can come here to the purveyor at the Rusty Pick and purchase a legendary weapon or armor piece from her. So focusing on that first method, there's a lot of elements of chance there. There's actually three. Number one, there's chance in terms of the number of legendary attributes you are getting on a drop because even a three-star legendary can drop a one or a two-star legendary item. Number two, of course, there is chance in terms of the actual weapon or armor piece you are getting, like a handmade or a scout armor, for instance. And three, there's chance in terms of the legendary attributes that you're getting on a drop, whether it's bloodied or vampire, two shot, etc., etc. So lots of elements of chance there. That's why the second method, purchasing legendaries from the purveyor, has generally become preferred because you can actually remove completely that first element of chance when it comes to the number of attributes you're getting because you can actually choose to buy a one, two, or a three-star legendary from the purveyor. So that's great. Also as well, there's some less elements of chance when it comes to the weapon because you can choose a ranged or a, or a melee weapon, but you can only just choose armor here, right? But even when it comes to these, you still cannot choose a specific ranged weapon to be legendary or a specific melee weapon to be legendary. And of course you can't choose a specific armor piece to be legendary. That's still overall, you know, up for chance. And then of course you still got the chance of getting the legendary attributes that you want. So lots of elements of chance with those both th first two methods. This is why the third method, the new method of legendary crafting, is going to become the best method by far to be getting legendaries because it removes those first two elements of chance completely. You can now, when the update launches, one, craft any kind of legendary weapon that you want as a one, two, or a three-star weapon, or a three-star armor piece, or a three-star power armor piece. You can choose the number of attributes you are getting on a legendary. So that is great. It's completely removing that element of chance. You don't need to farm legendaries anymore if you don't want to. You can just choose, I want a one, two, or a three-star, right? The second way is that it allows you to choose the actual weapon or armor piece or power armor piece you are crafting. So no longer do you have to hope that you're getting a specific armor or you're getting a specific weapon from a drop or from the purveyor. It's completely removed. You have that in that choice in the palm of your hands, which is freaking awesome. So let's say Steel Rain launches and you want a legendary handmade. You can just keep continuously rolling legendary handmaids until you get your one that you're happy with, which is great. And of course, there's still that third element of chance in terms of getting the legendary legendary attribute that you want, but that's always going to be up to chance, right? And you need to remember as well that as you're rolling new legendaries, that it completely wipes the current legendary attributes on there. So if you are concerned about wiping legendary attributes, you just get a new handmade, you get a new armor piece that you want, and then you craft and re-roll on that specific one. So how do you actually get involved in this system? Well, there are two components that you need to be able to craft as part of the legendary crafting system. One, legendary modules, and two, legendary cores. We all know about legendary modules. I'll very quickly cover that. You essentially, you trade your legendaries here at legendary exchange machines, and then you go to the purveyor and you purchase legendary modules off of her. I've already purchased them, but you can purchase 10 at a time before you swap servers. And they are uh, 
overall to get 10, you, you spend 500 script. So that's nice. We all know how to do that. Also, you're going to be able to get modules as well as part of the uh, season five. So here, for instance, you get three legendary modules and they appear throughout the scoreboard. So number of method methods to get modules that really hasn't changed. But legendary cause is the new shiny thing. So I want to make sure that we get down here because that's where it's relevant because there are some workbenches here. So let me show you what legendary cores look like because they're pretty cool. Uh, I know there's one definitely all the way down here. So let's just let's just go here. Um, but they do appear throughout the scoreboard, scoreboard as well. This is a legendary core, all right? So you're going to need a module or modules and legendary cores to be able to craft legendaries with this system. So there's a number of ways that you can get these as well. Of course, part of the scoreboard, as you rank up complete challenges, you will get legendary cores here and there. But you can also get them by completing seasonal events like Meat Week, for instance. You can get them by completing public events that pop up on your map with the exclamation mark, like Scorched Earth, like Encrypted, like Colossal Problem. Any of those public events, you can get legendary cores, which is awesome. Also as well, you get legendary cores by doing daily ops. So there is an incentive to keep doing your daily ops, keep doing your public events, and keep progressing as part of the scoreboard because you will get legendary cores. So those are, are, are the main methods, right? So now that you have a bunch of legendary modules and a bunch of legendary cores, and you're gonna need a fair few if you wanna continuously reroll, as I described, what do you do now? Well, let's pick a weapon to turn into legendary, right? And just for the sake of it, I'm going to craft a pepper shaker because this is one of the new weapons as part of Steel Rain and Meat Week. It is a hybrid heavy gun slash shotgun. Freaking awesome. I think it's still part of heavy guns here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to craft a brand new pepper shaker, right? Level 50 because you want your things to be level 50. Now, we swap to modify, okay? Now, you can do this on an existing legendary. Like, I could convert these ones into new legendaries if I want to, but they're the attributes that I want. So, I don't want to, you know, completely wipe these attributes. I want to start with a blank slate, this brand new Pepper Shaker, okay? So, now let's say I want to turn it into a legendary. You go to the mod slots here, select on no legendary mod if it's a non-legendary. Non and you can choose, as I mentioned, between a one, two, or a three star legendary mod. As you see, it progressively requires more legendary cores and legendary modules. So a one star legendary mod requires one core and two modules. A two star requires three cores and three modules. And a, a three star requires five cores and four modules. So that's generally how much it, it, it takes. I don't know actually if it differs between weapon to weapon, but I'm pretty sure it's relatively the same. We can actually check that really quickly. The plasma cutter should give us a, a good indication. So one and two, three and three, five and four. So that one is the same as well. All right. So let's say we want to turn this pepper shaker, non legendary, into a one star. We can do that by using those modules and that core. So I've got an, a, a nocturnal pepper shaker, right? I'm like, all right, well, that's cool, but I want a two star now. Let's select the two star legendary mod. Now I've got an anti armor pepper shaker. Sweet, all right? We're using more cores and more modules, but we're getting more attributes in return. But now I want a three star, and pretty much you should be doing three star. Like, those are going to get you the best weapons if all the attributes line up correctly. You really should be saving your cores and your modules for three star. So that's a bit of advice from me. But let's craft this as a three star. And I've got a Ghoul Slayer, Ghoul Slayer's Pepper Shaker, right? 50% limb damage plus one perception. Now, there is nothing stopping me from going back to a one star if I want to. There's nothing, nothing stopping me from going from a one star to a three star if I want to, or from a three star to a two star. And I'm just rolling just to demonstrate here. You can go from whatever you want, all right? Nothing stopping you at all. That's why this system just, you know, it's, it's flexible in that regard. So you keep doing this and you keep doing this and until you get the one that you want or the attributes that you want. So I'm going to keep doing three star for now and let's see what I get. Anti-armor pepper shaker. Pretty decent, all right? That's pretty good for a full health build. Let's keep going. Exterminators. No, I don't want that. And you keep going and you keep going. Furious is not bad. I want to see how long it, it takes me. Two shot is okay. Can I get it? Can I get a quad? Quad's freaking awesome, all right? Because that can keep firing and firing and firing. But you get the point, right? You can keep crafting as so long as you have cores and modules to, to last you, right? So that's what you do with... Uh, well, actually, that's all right. Furious, faster fire rate. I can't stop, man. I just I just want to bloody... Junk, uh, junkie, no, bloody, berserkers. Aristocrat, here's a new one actually. So damage increases as caps increase. And the last round in the magazine has a 25% chance to deal double damage. Freaking awesome. Let's stick with that for now. 
So you'll see as well as part of this system that there are new legendaries as part of Steel Rain. And I'm going to make a separate video on that, mind you. All the new legendaries and the buff to existing legendary attributes as well. It's pretty cool. But let's do an armor piece just to just for a sake of comparison. So I want to craft now a Covert Scout armor, a chest piece, just to show you. And then we'll swap to modify. Um, let's go this chest piece here. No legendary mod, same idea, right? Start with a one star if you want to. You can start with a three star if you want to. Nothing stopping you. Let's go straight to a three star. Let's go down to a two star. Like, I'm just showing you how, you know, the different ways that you can adopt this system. But as I mentioned, make sure you keep doing the three star and the three star and the three star. I think that is definitely the best way to ensure you are getting the best possible weapons and armor pieces out there. And of course, you can do this exact thing, same thing with power armor at power armor stations as well. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to do separate videos on legendary power armor and all the new legendary attributes and the buffs that, that, that are happening because some legendary attributes are now better when it comes to, you know, certain ones like mutants, for instance. You actually have more damage as you have more mutations. So I will make a separate video on that. But essentially, that's the system. Like, I, I hope this video has helped. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns or queries in the comments below. I'll keep this character as is, so if anyone wants me to test something or to roll a certain weapon or just whatever it might be, let me know in the comments. But there we go. I got an unyielding one. 25 fire resistance and junk items are reduced by 20%. Awesome, right? So that's pretty much it. Um, I don't actually think there is a power armor station down here. There is not. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'll go to to my camp. Where is my camp? It might actually be blocked at the moment. Yeah, it is blocked at the moment. I will cut scene to me doing our uh, power armor just so you can get a sense of that too. Okay, we are here at my makeshift camp just to show you crafting legendary power armor pieces because that's going to become pretty important in the game, especially if you are a power armor user. But again, you go to a power armor station, you have your power armor there, and you select modify. And you can, just like before, craft or re-roll new uh, legendary attributes on your existing power armor pieces. So with T65, I want to get rid of auto stim. I want to go to one star. It's the same thing. I go to a two star. I go back down to a one star. You can do whatever you want. So long as you got the components and the cores and the modules to do so. Look at that. Oh my god, that's actually pretty good. Bolstering, increased AP refresh speed, and breaks 50% slower. That's actually not that bad. So that demonstrates what you can do with power armor. And, it, and you can chop, uh, swap to your other other pieces as well. So if I don't want a troubleshooter's T65, I'll go here. Straight to three star exterminators. No, I don't want that. Mutants wasa. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. Auto sim, you know, I'll, I'll keep auto sim. I can keep rolling if I want to. So hopefully that helps. I again, I will do a video on legendary power armor to tell you which of the uh, attributes you should be looking out for. But with all that out of the way, let's get to the conclusion of this video. Alrighty, Waysanders, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know as always your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, this has been the Lone Bot Wanderer. Please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep buying the good fight.